discussion. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. And today we're going to talk about the fantastic subject and an important subject about the use of video in sales because it's getting more and more important as we go. And I'm joined by three guests who are here to discuss it. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves in turn rather than me um, read out bios. I always think it's more interesting to hear from the guests themselves. Um, first off, um, Jorge, do you want to tell the viewers a little bit about yourself? Sure. Well, uh, my name is Jorge or George. I get both. The The funny story is I was named after George Harrison of the Beatles. Oh. My, my dad's Cuban, so he <laughs> spelled it Jorge, and I have this identity crisis now. But uh, in any case, yeah, I'm one of the co-founders of a uh, startup here in the Bay Area called First Cut. Um, and our whole mission is helping sales, marketing, and customer success teams at B2B companies, particularly software companies at this point, generate video content um, as easy and as affordable as possible. Before launching First Cut, I ran the inside sales team for uh, Twitter's Mopub business line, oh. which was a startup that we sold to Twitter in 2013. I left in <clears throat> 2015 to go and start this venture uh, or what would, be, what would eventually become this venture. Before that, uh, I've been always a sales leader, entrepreneur. So it's my 13th startup in 16 years. And I'm only 37, by the way. So uh, I, I failed a lot very quickly. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I've always been in, in software my entire career. And I'm excited to be here. Great. Thank you. And Meredith. I am Meredith Elliott Powell, and uh, I am older than 37 and not named after anybody interesting. Um, anyway, I am a business growth expert whose passion is, um, is sales and helping my clients really understand how to sell and to succeed in constantly shifting uh, economic times. You know, Jorge really lives in a time of startup and fail. And I feel like the skills that you have to do what you do, I'm trying to mm -hmm. bring more into the corporate world because that's what you really need to succeed today. Excellent. And Todd. Hi, everybody. Todd Martin. I'm actually working at Pipeliner CRM and I head up the, uh, the ISV and our partner alliances as the vice president. So I'm based down in uh, Palm Beach, Florida and uh, great to be here. I, I get to spend a lot of time with John. I'm glad I get to be on the call with you now. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So let's get straight into it. So the use of video in the sales process. So let's just start off with a baseline question here. Why is video becoming more and more important in the sales process? Um, maybe Jorge, George, you want to start off with this? I'm going to call you Jorge Harrison from now on. <laughs> Thank you. My dad would be very happy. Yeah. Rest in peace, right. George Harrison, of course. <laughs> you know, I, I think there's a couple things. You know, there's, it's really uh, in a world also where now it's uh, AI and artificial intelligence is really has, has per permeated the, our industry and and you you know you don't know necessarily if it's a bot or or a, an automated message coming to you nowadays via email or very or via text based communication and i think video has a, an ability to bring this level of transparency and authenticity that we just have never had before in this way right if you think about i still remember tv and analog and these sort of things and you know, that I, I see it as an opportunity for the salesperson or the sales organization to actually be able to create a commercial, right? Create this level of visual experience, audio visual experience that now uh, allows them to communicate just more effectively, right? It makes total sense that now we have that ability to do that. Now, I, I also think that the, there, there's this, this is, trend in the industry or just in our lives where we're bombarded by messages and it's just we and our concentration our focus our attention are all really really difficult to to gather these days and so video in my opinion is the most effective way of doing that whether that's a selfie style video from your phone you see this stuff on linkedin all the time you're like oh my god it's like it's someone in their, you know, bathroom or whatever, you know, but they get engagement, right? There's this level of authenticity, or if it's a more higher uh, produced, higher quality video, like a customer testimonial or a customer story case study video, there's still this level of social proof there that exists. And I think that is at its core, the most important uh, or, or, the, or the reason why video is really becoming really the most effective way 
to uh, to communicate. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, great points. And how about you, Meredith? So why do you think video is now becoming important in sales, or more important, should I say? You know, I think it's because it it really. Um, well, I, I do. I agree with you. It's becoming so important, more important. But mm -hmm. it's sort of it non. I like to think of it as that it non vanillas the sales process. Right. You know, it's ever, we're all selling a commodity. I mean, I don't care what you sell. You can buy it anywhere, anytime, and from anybody. So in essence, what I'm selling is me, which is interesting. We're back to the basis of sales. But I can't run around the world and talk to everybody. Mm -hmm. But I can shoot video, and people get to know me. And I think it's interesting that video is being shot professionally, whether like Jorge said, I'm putting something on LinkedIn where I'm talking about my product, but it's also me on a mountaintop holding my bicycle. And all of that is sales because I'm putting my personality and that differentiates me from the person who sells the same thing and allows me to be able to find and build my tribe. Excellent. Yeah, exactly. I would totally agree. And Todd, how about you? What do you think? Um, you use video a lot in them. Um, yeah, I, I do. I do. And, <laughs> and maybe I'll take the, the approach of this. Um, of Like Meredith said, I think so many of my clients and partnerships are not sitting in Palm Beach, Florida. And so what I like to say is, hey, how can I really connect with somebody, you know, wherever they are in the world? And I, I got to tell you, I've been turning on my camera, forcing myself every morning to turn it on or for every single call. Because I do the web calls, right? Like we're doing right now. And I got to tell you what it does is, and it's interesting um, because it, I think it turns off the noise for a minute. Because I think so many times people have their computer up and if they're doing a web meeting, they're kind of also have that other screen kind of going or that email pops up or the, it dings on the phone. And you know, people really don't like looking away if you're really looking at them like right like this, you know, and you're really, <laughs> you know, it's really hard, right? It's almost like you're sitting across from them. So I would just say that's for me is the biggest game changer uh, as of late. And I think really the ability for people to really kind of reciprocate and turn it on. I think I see that more and more every day, John. Yeah, the, I, I would totally agree. Um, and I think that's an interesting point that you make is that it does really become an antidote for that uh, distracted view. You know, when, when you're just talking to somebody over, you know, over um, VoIP or whatever, it's very easy for people to be doing other things. Um, so Meredith, from your point of view, what are some of the best practices that you can use um, that you would recommend when using um, video? You know, I think that uh, I think one of the things I feel like people um, make a mistake in and a, and a really good best practice is to make sure you blend the casual with the professional. I mean, you, you know, we, we take our cameras out, we can shoot a video from anywhere, but at the same time, you've still got to have some of those, um, some of those professional videos on there and have that, have that combination of the two. I also think you need to do some that are um, professional, some based on your products, but a lot where you really allow people to get to know who you are and what you're about. The other is you need to you need to practice. You need to get good with the camera and good with it. Because great video will send your business to another level. Bad video will put you in the tank. And if you are not good at video, go out there and practice and, and get good at video. Interview other people. Use video to get um, to get testimonials um, from from other people. But I think those are some really good starts to kind of get you out the door and get you going as practice. Yeah, that's a great point. Great point, Sam, because I, I totally agree with you. It's, um, it's you have to have that mixture because if everything is just really amateurish, then, um, you know, there's a certain charm to the amateurish stuff. But if you don't balance it with professional stuff, then uh, it could get tough. Um, you know, how about you, Todd? Well, I think in the, in the, I'll go back to the live setting. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll stay on that. But I think what I see a lot of people making a mistake on right now is not having just the normal kind of equipment. You know, sometimes they don't think about it, but have a good camera. I have a pretty good camera. You know, I learned my lesson the hard way on that, but have a good camera. You know, have a backdrop that is either not, not really showing anything like I have right now, or maybe it's a little more branded like, like you have, John. And, and there's some good tools. If, if you're in an environment, I see this so much that someone's like in their house, right? They're a home worker, which is great, right? But they make these little kind of remote green screens that you can kind of put any image on the back. And I think just, you know, kind of be prepared, practice it for those live meetings. It'll really pay off. And I think it'll give you comfort. And it'll make the people you're talking to really kind of feel that, oh, wow, I need to get my, my game on. 
Yeah, yeah, that's always great, <laughs> great advice, Todd. Is the last thing you want is is when somebody is doing a live video is to have all their dirty dishes in the you know, <laughs> kitchen sink behind them or whatever. <laughs> so a little bit of thought is always good. Um, how about you, George? Yeah, I look at it a little differently. And, and uh, just to add or expand upon mm -hmm. what Meredith and Todd mentioned, I look at the world, well, my day-to-day -day is creating video. So, um, you know, so like I look at, it in in two sort of primary buckets the first bucket is you have the diy uh do-it-yourself video live video like we're doing right now using a zoom or video licious or there's a lot of these different tools where i now as a sales rep can now or sales leader uh, can now actually create videos myself right and and then i and i think about where where about where do those videos that I'm creating, how do they fit or align to the sales funnel or the sales cycle, right? Um, <clears throat> and so some of these things might be follow-up emails with a video embedded. You know, Vidyard does a good job of having the little, they have a Chrome plugin that you can use to record stuff. Uh, Wistia has a product called Soapbox these days. There's a variety of different, I mean, you could literally, you know, turn on your quick player, on your computer and record an HD video, right? The audio will be fine. Maybe buy a Yeti mic or whatnot. So there's all these really efficient ways to do that, but how does that actually align to the sales cycle? And where does a DIY video actually make sense as opposed to a professionally produced video? So that's the second component or second sort of column of video content that I think is relevant to this conversation is, when do you sit down with your sales team, your CS team, your marketing team and say, what are, our, what are our top 25 customers and how can we get stories from them, right? Um, and then use those stories, tag them appropriately, you know, in the same way that we look at defining buyer personas or ideal customer profiles and all this stuff that we do in sales planning, how do we actually start to tag and organize our content in the, with the same intelligence and then be able to repurpose that content? Right. And so, you know, when when you have now the ability to actually have objective uh, objections covered by your customers based on professionally produced video. Now, look, it doesn't always have to be my you, you might be at a conference. Mm -hmm. Right. And pull out your, your phone and say, Sally, you know, I know you're a customer. You, you, you know, you have, you know, give me a, you know, what, do you mind doing a 30 second snippet? I mean, this stuff happens all the time. It's so interesting. And that's where this, you know, serendipitous stuff happens. But again, also a, a professionally produced video. When does that get? Uh, when when is when is that relevant to to the sales cycle? And so that's how I look at it. DIY professionally produced. How do we balance it? Obviously, DIY costs you, you know, zero to very minimal investment. You know, depending on how much editing you want to do and these sort of things. So that's how I look at it. How does it map to the sales cycle? What types of video content map to those parts in the sales cycle? And, and then how do we actually start to track and understand what's working and what's not over time? Yeah, no, great points. And, and then on the flip side, um, um, say Meredith, what are some things to avoid when using videos? What, what's some, what are some mistakes that you've seen people make or things that you've been on the receiving end of that you think, yeah, probably don't want to do that? Well, I think sometimes people overused video. I've seen that. Um, I've seen that done quite a bit. Thinking that, um, thinking that you know, um, interact that I do is a video. Um, at times, I've seen people make videos um, uh, silly, and I think you want to watch your. Um, you know, I think you want to watch your professionalism. I also feel like um, not um, not using, forgetting to use video when video you know when video is needed having that correct balance um on your website and making sure that it is really creating an experience um you know for uh for the customer and then watching who you put on um you know the video making sure that um that you have the right people representing your organization and your pro you know your profession but i'd say really the biggest the one that drives me the most crazy is not getting rid of video is you know it's like having pictures a, pic, a profile picture of you from 1972 and there is video that that you know you shot even five and ten years ago and it needs to go 
you know, <laughs> so much about your business and things um, uh, are different. And so not going in there and, and really not getting it um, cleaned out. And then the last thing I'm going to say is forgetting to use video as a, a connection and a communication. Like, not to always just talk about yourself in the videos, but but it's you know as Jorge said to find ways to talk with um, about your customers, their stories. But I'm talking more about when you promote it online, making sure that you copy people and tag people and get other people involved in it so that you get following and you get engagement. I mean, I think studying those analytics and seeing what's working and what isn't is so key and be important. So being married to what you're doing and being open to changing it. Yeah, no, great, great points. And I particularly, I like that point also that you made earlier about the, the silliness of the humor. I mean, sometimes people forget that humor is quite a dangerous thing in many ways, because it's, uh, it's got so many cultural, you know, global, whatever um, uh, pitfalls that you need to be very careful and, and use it sparingly and use it only when you're pretty sure that it's uh, innocuous enough to make a, a good point without insulting someone. Um, how about you, uh, Todd? What, uh, what are some things that you've seen that maybe people shouldn't do or worst practices? The worst, the worst practice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, knowing who maybe shouldn't be doing video, number one, you know, not, it's not made for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, some people are very comfortable, very good in front of a yeah, camera. Uh, just, you know, so it's, and, and if you're pushing somebody, which is sometimes okay to push someone in that direction, you know, it, it, I think it's okay to script things out a little bit, you know, kind of give mm -hmm. some general outlines as a sales leader to your sales team. Um, maybe, you know, bullet point some high topics so they're not going too off topics. I, I do see people kind of talk about uh, politi pol uh, po politics or sports. Uh, so all of a sudden they throw that in there and it's like, whoa, wait a minute here. You know, we're talking about CRM. Uh, bring it bring it back. So that, that's probably the, the, the one thing I see maybe people should avoid of, of just free forming it. Um, from, from, a back, uh, from a live standpoint, I, I've seen some, some, some really bad ones as well. One of them comes when when you're not live, uh, when you're not sitting across from somebody, the video is sometimes delayed. And I think we have a tendency to just talk and talk and talk instead of sometimes listening because sometimes you'll cut somebody off. Mm -hmm. and, and I think some people are not really accustomed to it perfectly. So I see, I've been in too many meetings where someone just keeps going and it's like, just, 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 just look and stop and, and, and they'll talk. So that's the second thing. And the third one I, I jotted down was, is no one to turn off the camera because I was in one thing. <laughs> And I got to tell you, the person forgot to turn off the camera during the meeting. And what did they do? They pulled up their tool to keep notes in. And next thing they started typing about the meeting while everyone was still in the conference room sitting there. And uh, well, lo and behold, they, uh, they got the whole thing on tape. So, oh. so anyway, three, three ideas for you. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I love a great point. Great points, Todd. And it's, and it's funny. Yeah, I mean, I think... Um, you know, learning, learning how to use it. Um, but the, the, what you just said about the gaps is, is really critical, I think, or the talking over people, because that is one of the th toughest things when you are, are doing um, kind of virtual meetings is sometimes that lag. And, and sometimes, you know, as you say, some people lack the self-awareness to know when to stop talking and when to actually, you know, say, I've made enough points now, maybe I should pass it over to the next person. So um, now I wanted to again, you know, flip it again and maybe ask uh, um, all of you to share some examples that you have seen of really creative use of, of video. I mean, you don't have to name companies or whatever, but if you can just give some examples to our, our viewers about some, where you've seen some really creative and really great uses of video in the sales process. Um, maybe Jorge, you wanna start? Sure, well, <clears throat> a couple of things that come to mind. You know, what, what I've been observing on this webinar is that we've been talking about primarily DIY uh, video use, uh, particularly as the sales rep or um, in, as an individual contributor, for example, and how do we use that to actually drive sales forward? <laughs> and, you know, there's, I hate to use buzzwords or, you know, in, you know, latest industry trends and so on, but, you know, we have seen social selling come, come on the scene a couple of years ago, which uh, for, for a while I, I was like, you know, trying to figure out what that actually meant. And what I think I've been able to distill it down to is personal branding, right? Like now we as salespeople have to be marketers as well, right? I mean, this is like when did, mar when did sales ever do these kinds of things, right? Now it's like 
because of these tools, we've been able to actually do this ourselves. And so, you know, I, I would say that, you know, being able to understand how to leverage your, these video and, and then the corresponding social networks so that fusion to build your personal brand and um, is really key. So some examples, and that's what we've been essentially talking about and how to, and, you know, I think Meredith mentioned being on a mountain somewhere and showing that personality, right? That's, that's, I think that's important. Like I have long hair and I got my guitars everywhere, you know, and it, I literally have my guitars everywhere here. I got about seven of them. This is my flamenco guitar here. And, you know, what's interesting is that I think that, you know, I think that, a certain uh, balance is really important and, and, you know, and you see examples right now of sales leaders out there, um, sales reps, SDRs now, I mean, you know, you, you see SDRs doing all this social selling stuff. So, you know, there's some examples of, of people, I think John Barrows does a, does a great job with video, check him out. He's John Barrows consulting out of Boston, does a lot of really great high tech um, sales training, Salesforce, LinkedIn, etc. He he's got some great stuff, and his one of his partners there, uh, Morgan Ingram, uh, does an SDR podcast. You know, those are great examples. Um, uh, the CEO at Scaled, um, Scaled is a another consulting company um, out of Jake Dunlop, out of New York City. He's doing a ton of stuff with video uh, these days. Um, so, you know, th those are some really great examples. One caveat that, that is more of a, a personal, not pet peeve, mm -hmm. but I would say I, I understand the impact um, on engagement that controversial statements make. I totally get it, right? I think, you know, as I think about my own, my own personal values and, and what I I'm comfortable or wanting to project again, you know, mm -hmm. out into the world, I'm not comfortable, you know, personally uh, putting out negative stuff or just trying to put controversial stuff out to drive engagement. You know, you see people fighting and arguing and I think it's silly. I think it's like, you know, it's like, uh, you know, kids in the nursery and you're, you know, you're 50 years old and you're doing this kind of stuff. I don't think that's for me personally, it's not what I want to put out there. And frankly, I'm not comfortable buying from these kinds of people because they don't really align with my values to what Meredith said. I'm going to go to someone that aligns more, who's yeah. more into maybe, you know, maybe the things that I like or, and these sort of things. So, um, you know, that was just a little caveat around examples there, but, uh, but that those are, you know, Th those are some of the examples that I've said that I've seen. One last thing is Gong.io um, did a great job of Gong. Does everyone know Gong? They're like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, uh, vo uh, voice intelligence platform. And what I saw them come on the scene with was really interesting. They were actually out of Israel, okay? Uh, not a Silicon Valley US based company at the time, now they are here. Uh, and they launched, I think it was like 14 to 20 customer testimonial videos. And so, and then they later invested in some higher quality production. Mm -hmm. But what was interesting about that, and so check them out, gong.io, you can see their YouTube videos. So people were like, holy smokes, these folks are crushing it. Now, and in actuality, they had like 14 or 14 to, you know, 15, 20, something like that testimonials, but it looked so big, right? There were all these incredible customer stories. So check those out as, uh, out as well. Those are different, you know, high, higher produced, um, you know, videos that, uh, that also are incredibly effective. Yeah, no, no, great points, uh, Jorge. I like that. Um, uh, and I agree with you. I think one of the things, even from some of the examples you gave, I think, one of the things is, yeah, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I don't like the overly controversial. To be honest, I don't like people swearing and stuff in their videos either, just to try and make it seem more, you know, just trying to be like more hip or cool. I just think it's unnecessary. I think, you know, if you've got something of quality to say, you should be able to say it without um, resorting to industrial language. Um, how about you, uh, uh, Merida? What are some of the great examples you've seen? I had two really cool ones lately. Number one, I bought a new car. And the day after I bought the car, I got a video from the guy who sold me the car mm. with a car that was just like I bought on his lot. And he walked me through the entire car and pointed out how to use everything and then thanked me again for my business. 
I thought that was a cool, simple, and really effective way to use video because A, I'm not going to read the manual, um, but B, it was, it was neat because it wasn't an instructional video from the car company. It wasn't anything like it. It was him with one of his buddies holding the phone, and he just walked me around um, everything. And then um, this past June for my uh, birthday, I got a video from my um, dental office where they all jumped on. Um, they obviously had it up on a desk or something, and they did a little happy birthday thing, but mentioned a couple of things about me personally, some of my hobbies and things um, that they worked in. What, what I love about both of those stories is, one, I think they're very creative. Um, two, I think they take the customer experience to another level. But my favorite is they're free. They didn't cost <laughs> them anything and they made a really um a really powerful impact and so i think that the more and and i'll say one more thing is i love that they're little small people they're little businesses they're not corporate mm -hmm. entities but boy video just gives you power that it just flattens out the competitive landscape if you jump on it and you learned it to to use it well so those are they're kind of my biggies yeah, no, I, I love those. I love those examples. Those are fantastic. And as you say, it's just that, that's exactly it. It's just being it's being creative and really kind of connecting with your customer in, in, in a very kind of personal, but very creative. And as you say, but a simple and free way as well, which is amazing. Um, how about you, Todd? What are some of we the best examples? Free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a couple things. Um, I think on that personal branding that Jorge and Meredith talked about, I have a couple of friends in Los Angeles and they're uh, kind of in the acting scene, right? And so they're kind of coming out with some very unique things because, you know, they're promoting themselves. So I have one friend and he's a comedian, stand up comedian, and, and it's a tough business, right? Mm -hmm. But he's taken to now, his name's Mike Young, great guy. Um, and what he's taken to now is every time he goes to a city and tours, he'll go and, and see a couple of people maybe he's met there or knows from before. And he gets on and videotapes them. And then he's, and, and then at the venue, he's there and he's kind of filming kind of the backstage. Well, what this creates is this whole excitement that, hey, when Mike comes to my city, you know, maybe I'll hang out and be kind of be on TV, right? And I got to tell you, his followers are skyrocketing. And I, and I kind of watch the trends as, as he comes to like my town, I'll see it go way up, you know, just from local viewers. And then I went to one of his shows at the improv and all of a sudden it was like, wow, it was really contributing to that. So just a great way you can use that personal, you know, just with the, I hate to say, but with the stick and the selfie kind of thing, very personal, very real kind of guy to really kind of drive that attendance uh, for his event. So that's one one thing just on that personal do-it-yourself way. Um, it, it, shifting gears 100% is what I'm seeing a lot and kind of what we're kind of coaching on um, a lot with the, the partners we're dealing with is use that video as a way to really get through to other people in the sales cycle. Because what we're finding is we're, we're coming across situations, at least in the CRM business, where it's not just one person at a company saying, yes, new CRM for everybody. It's a whole group decision. You'll have the head of sales, the CEO, the head of marketing, you got customer service, SDR groups, everything like that. And so you may only deal with a small fraction of it, but how do we take that initial meeting that goes really, really well? And then how do we kind of relay it? Because what we're seeing is a lot of times a person you deal with, they, they, they forward emails. Uh, right? And so next thing you know, what are they forwarding? They're forwarding this like beautiful <laughs> PDF that marketing developed, right? Mm -hmm. And it's 15 pages. Like, ah, but is that really getting opened? I don't know. Now, if you include a little link that says, hey, look at how, you know, our tool works with your Outlook. Oh, they all click on that. And so in that little, little, that little video that you put in there are two or three little videos. I think that's what gets watched when you have to kind of reach multiple buyers in a sales cycle. So I'm, I'm seeing that more and more and more cut down on all the words, keep it clean, a couple clicks. And then really, I think you get your professional videos that Jorge can help you build uh, out there front and center to like the CEO or kind of that C-suite that you're probably aiming for. Um, yeah. Um, Thanks for the plug, Todd. Todd. Yeah. yeah, it's okay, Jorge. Um, we're going to expect you to do a flamenco <laughs> outro for this uh, for this panel discussion today. You know, I will. You got to be careful because I will do it. No problem. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Happily, um, by the way. Um, yeah, great, great points, uh, great points there, Todd. And I think that is, I think you should always consider, you know, when you're when you're 
attaching something to an email for a prospect or a customer, where else could that possibly go? And what, what is the most effective way of, of making that content available? And the other thing I think that people overlook a lot of the time is that uh, YouTube is heavily used by business people and it is a search engine too. And I think people sometimes overlook that, that it is. And that people, it comes up in search results, that people use YouTube, they go in there and they search for business related content. So um, you definitely shouldn't overlook that. Okay, okay, in the last, uh, in the last part of our discussion, um, I'd like you all to put on your, uh, to take out your crystal ball and, uh, and put on your, your little hat and tell us about, so where does, where does video go in the future? Maybe I'll start with you, Meredith. What's the future of video in sales, do you think? Oh, I think, I think it's going to become more and more um, and more powerful. I think that it is going to, as businesses become um, more global, as budgets become tighter, um, as there's need for more efficiency and more content and different, more difficult ways to differentiate yourself in the marketplace. I think we're going to be doing, I think we're going to be seeing more and more sales calls happening like we're on um, this Zoom. I think that you're going to see a lot more um, pre and follow up. I think it's going to be a lot more ways that um that we're um that we're getting to know uh, a business i jumped on video soon probably not as soon as most people did but when someone told me it truly is the future i mean you talked about youtube oh my god you can learn how to do anything on youtube so i just see video becoming more and more um, powerful and more front and center and, and i think that um i think you need if you are in sales you need to get more and more comfortable with being a part of it yeah, absolutely. And actually, funnily, on, on that point about learning how to do anything on YouTube, I interviewed um, uh, Kara Brookins the other day, who actually, um, she built a house with her four children using YouTube videos. Uh, and this was back, this was many years back, even back before, um, you know, video was even where it is today on YouTube. So um, you can truly do anything. And I, I've done a few things recently that I wouldn't have been able to do without YouTube, but I'm, I'm trying to keep it on the down low. So, because otherwise my wife's going to say, well, you can actually do a lot more than you let on. <laughs> so uh, how about you, uh, Jorge? What do you see as the future of video? Yeah, <clears throat> well, outside of bandwidth getting, getting better um, and connectivity and these sort of things. I think, you know, the VR, AR, augmented reality, virtual reality, I mean, we already have these headsets and like it, it's gonna come in the next, in, the, in five years, we're gonna have VR headsets or, or augmented reality headsets and it's gonna be quite different. There's also something called geospatial stuff, which is gonna be uh, gesture-based things that we'll, we'll be able to do uh, this technology has ex existed for a long time. It just hasn't really hit um, really uh, hard. So I think hardware is going to absolutely um, start to be adopted. That's going to change that, uh, the dynamic. You know, we, we sh will, again, we'll, we'll be looking at each other in a room with a headset. You know, um, the other thing I think that's, that's going to happen is uh, better like semantic semantic analysis of what's happening. So the tools that we'll have to be able to better understand what's happening on these calls will will be better and will be there uh, for us to understand. Um, in the same way that you know Gong and Chorus.ai and all, you know Exec Vision over um, in in DC is doing with voice, we'll we'll start to see with video. The other the the other thing from a non tech like technology perspective that I'm pretty darn sure is going to happen is salespeople are going to have to be able to communicate um, uh, effectively on camera. And uh, in the same way that, you know, we now need to be as a sales rep, you'd have to be, uh, unless you're not, you know, and if you're just building lists or something, I guess you have no external uh, communication uh, required, but I think that, more and more, you're going to see this salesperson have a, um, a liberal arts type of, uh, you know, sort of um, background, right? Getting in front of the camera, being able to speak charismatically, not being scared. These skill sets, I think, are going to be more and more important. And by the way, they were always important, right? <clears throat> you know, you, you couldn't send someone, you had to train someone to be able to actually 
go into a, an in-person meeting and these sort of things, right? So I think sitting behind the camera right now, you know, I don't even have my shoes on, right? Um, <laughs> uh, you know, is is totally, uh, you know, is is better than, you know, or less stressful than going into a, an, you know, a building or an office having in person. So, you know, I, I think that, you know, there's going to be a shift in that, in that kind of um, sales rep and the skills, again, the communication skills, their presentation skills, their ability to get on front of, in front of the camera um, is going to be more and more important as we move forward because we have to break through these, these, uh, these problems or these, these challenges or the noise, I would say. Not problems, challenges, but yeah, I guess, you know, but the, the noise and the clutter that's out there. Yeah, and I think that's an interesting, I think that's a great point. And actually, if you think about it, the, the generations coming through now are already very comfortable. Oh, yeah. recording. In fact, they're more comfortable on FaceTime or yeah. recording themselves. Selfies, the whole selfies, thing, absolutely. Insta stories, whatever. So yeah. they'll probably, they're the ones we're going to have to teach to be able to go in and actually talk to people um, face to face. I think yeah. the, video, the video bit's going to be down pat for them. Um, okay, yeah, how about you, Todd? What's the future? Oh. Yeah, I think I'll have to get my kids because I have two 12 year olds right now and uh, they, uh, they're teaching me sometimes, you know, so they're getting brought up at that early age. Just, uh, and I got to tell you what they're doing with videos just as part of the normal course of action, even in class now. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's, it's just second nature. It's almost like that's how you take the test now. For, mm -hmm. for, for like some music and, and, and acting classes. So, um, but I think what the game changer is, and, I, and it's it, Jorge, right, right in with your thinking, but I think the technology is shifting now. And, and I, you know, not to use like the mobile phone as the end all, but I think when the technology shifts from like a, we'll call it 4G to a 5G, you know, and I think we're a couple years away probably from more mainstream on that. I think that's really when video is, I mean, that thorough pick com becomes tenfold what it is today with a good connection. So we're talking 10 times that bandwidth. That's a game changer when it comes to video because right now there's lag times and there's, you know, the crackles and things like that. I think that's really when the hardware then catches up and then it's just about teaching people along the way. So I think that's, that's really what we're going to see from a technology standpoint, that, that eye-opening event that just kind of starts happening when we have that thorough put and mobile yeah, absolutely all right well we're um up at the end of our time here it's been a fascinating discussion discussion unfortunately meredith had to to jump off but jorge before you go um tell us a little bit more about yourself and how people can get in touch with you yeah absolutely uh well <clears throat> as i mentioned i'm a co-founder of a company called firstcut.io and we help uh, B2B SaaS companies, enterprise software companies learn how to create this type of video. And um, <clears throat> if you want to, you know, and, and what I mean particularly this type of video uh, is you know, video that sales, marketing, customer success teams need to drive more revenue, to generate more leads, to close more deals. And so, you know, these are customer testimonial videos. These are, or case studies, which have uh, very similar, have certain, certain nuances, product demo videos, uh, you know, influencer insight videos. One of the things that's really, really important that I, that I sort of forgot to mention in my what's the future is we all have to be thought leaders now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we have to be, we have to be experts in our industry. Who are we going to buy from myself? Or someone else, well, you know, in a world that, like Meredith mentioned, is where everything is a commodity, uh, you know, for sure, right? If it's remotely an interesting business, there's 100 startups doing it, sure. you know, tomorrow with 25 of them venture funded, right? So <clears throat> how do you break through the, 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 the noise and the clutter? Video, for sure, audio, visual, um, but you know, what do you actually do in front of the camera or what kind of content you're putting out there? I think it's really being able to, to present that you are an expert and that is more important than ever before. The days of, you know, BS salespeople um, where, you know, just working the numbers and the law of averages. Hey, I was a door to door salesperson in college. I did it for three years. I, you know, I did that whole thing. I get it. You know, uh, one of the things I had to establish in, about you know 45 seconds to so people would let me in their door was that I was an education expert. I was selling books. This is how I paid for graduate school, etc. So now we're in my sales cycles were 20 minutes, right? <laughs> now we're you know now we're you know we're talking enterprise B2B uh, sales where sales cycles you know are 
at a minimum days, right? To uh, if you're lucky, maybe a couple hours, you know, but to months, etc. How do we actually establish establish ourselves um, as as thought leaders? And uh, and video is the best way. Audio too, right? Audio is another mm-hmm. thing. Yep. Um, so I think it's audio visual marketing is really what the future is, and it's not just video only. Um, but when people are driving to work, there's still millions of people that get up every morning and yep. drive to work um, or on the treadmill and they listen to podcasts, which is the new radio. Right. So um, that, that that's uh, that's what I'd say. Thank you so much to everyone for joining this webinar. Really excited. Todd, great to see you. Todd and I, we've been communicating for years. <laughs> it's the first time visually. Uh, so. And it just shows you now you can actually get to meet face to face. And and Todd, quickly before we go, maybe you want to tell people about um, about yourself and also about the the Pipeliner Ambassador Program that you look after. Sure, sure, sure. So I'm with uh, once again I'm with Pipeliner. It's pipelinersales.com is our website. Um, if you're looking for a, a sales uh, CRM uh, solution, uh, Pipeliner is one you should definitely take a look at. Uh, really, this dynamic instant visualization. There's nothing else on the market like it. It's unbelievable. So give it a look. Um, and and uh, that's that's the little uh, pin there. Uh, and uh, we are starting or have started uh, what we call our ambassador program. And it's great. So if you're in a position where you find yourself where people are either maybe asking you, hey, what, you know, what sales solution do you use? Or which one do you recommend? Or which one could really help me with uh, video and making sure that I'm enabling my sales teams? Um, we have a program. It's called our ambassador program. Uh, the, feel free to contact me about it. It's a great way to kind of make a good recommendation, make sure your, your, your client's really getting taken care of with white glove service. Excellent. All right. Well, listen, thanks everybody for joining us. Thanks for the attendees. Um, thanks, um, Tam Williams just said uh, he really enjoyed this. Thanks for the feedback, Tam. Um, this will obviously, the recording will be available to anybody who couldn't make it today. I want to thank Todd, Jorge and Meredith for an excellent discussion. I actually made some notes here myself on things I'm going to re- revisit again. Um, so until next time, until our next panel discussion, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM, See you all again soon and thank you for joining us.